Hmm. In today's episode, we're sculpting, uh, well, nothing, really. But we've got a lot to talk about. So grab a cold one, pick a comfy spot, and stick around. Hey, hey, good morning, good day, good afternoon, and good evening. Welcome back to the channel. I'm your host, City Sculptor, and you have made your way back to Pangasus Bay. Hey, it's another beautiful day in the Bay, or at least it's starting that way. This is our first episode following the Economy 2.0 patch. And you can see in the background, we've got a few alerts that are popped up here and there, high rent and so forth. This was a save game that I had set up just before that patch went live and now the patch is installed and we're going to see how this uh, this changes the evolution of Pangasus Bay. I got to tell you, I'm not really sure what to expect. Now, as you look across the city here, we're up above Grand of Arabica Coffee Plantation, which was the subject of our last build. I hope you guys really enjoyed that one. I sure had a lot of fun with it. I think it serves as a beautiful backdrop for our conversation today. You know, and I just want to chat with you a little bit about the, the state of the city. I think it's going to be really interesting to see how this plays out. I uh, I understand that we're going to experience some sort of a massive death wave here in the not too distant future, and you'll start seeing ambulances pop up, um, and you know then the economy is going to change dramatically. But before we jump in, you know a couple things I want to point out uh, with our finances here. As you can see, it's October, let's call it noon of 2042, and the tile upkeep is at 18 million dollars. We've unlocked all except for 26 tiles. That's going to be a big drag on our finances. I've got taxation levels and so forth set just all across the board. This was long before we uh, we went through and, and and did this update and this patch. You know, we'll come back after we've had to let let the game have a chance to run and we'll start playing around and noodling with that. What I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and turn on cinematic camera mode and and I'm going to speed the game up to uh, a 3x speed. And let the game just run for a little bit while we talk a little bit. And, and, and I'm not gonna bore you to tears, I hope I'm not gonna bore you to tears uh, with what I wanna do, but I you just wanna chat a little bit about uh, who I am and, and the Pangasus Bay city build and you know where we're gonna go from here. Because when it's all said and done, I don't know how this is gonna shake out. Uh, will the city be able to stay financially viable? We'll see, we'll see. All right, and so let's just go ahead and uh, talk a little bit about what it is that we're doing here. First of all, I want to say thank you. Uh, I want to say thank you from the bottom of my heart because I do this part time. This is a part time gig for me. I have a full time job uh, that you know keeps me busy Monday through Friday. I have a wonderful family. I you know have the opportunity and luxury to travel a fair amount. Um, I've got um, I've got a great dog that I like to take for walks, and I have uh, some summer activities that I enjoy, especially golf. Golf is my favorite uh, summertime activity. I just love that. And so squeezing in time to create Pangasus Bay can be a challenge at times, uh, but I try to stay true, try, try to stay true to that once a week publication. And it's a lot of fun for me. I enjoy it. I love it. I love it. I mentioned summertime because uh, for all of our viewers, I mean, some of our viewers are in the Northern Hemisphere, some in the Southern Hemisphere. And uh, I live in the Northern Hemisphere. In fact, um, to be a little bit more specific, I live in the United States in a state called Minnesota, and I live in the Minneapolis-St. Paul metropolitan area. I've lived here most of my life. I really do like it. It's a beautiful place to be in the summertime. Wintertime, it's uh, it's a little cool. Uh, it's everything that Moscow would aspire to be when it talks about cold weather. <laughs> uh, but I've been very fortunate to be able to travel a lot. And, um, you know, I've been all over the world. In the United States, I have been to all but just a handful of our states. And then I've been all over North America, Canada and Mexico, the Caribbean and so forth. Been to Europe a handful of times. I've been to Australia, I've been to Asia. Uh, and, and so... I've tried to take inspiration from a wide variety of different uh, locations and destinations as I build out Pangasus Bay. You know, my build style is a little bit different than some uh, because um, I think I could accurately just say it as it's maybe a little artistic, than, more art artistic than some, uh, less realistic than others, and it just kind of fits in the, in the middle somewhere. And, you know, when I started playing City Skylines originally, that was kind of the build, my build style. It's the build style that I've carried into CS2. And I thought, well, let's just share this with, uh, with an audience and see how people react. Um, to my surprise and amazement, um, it it's, seems to have gone very well. In a very short period of time, I've grown the channel from really nothing to 11,000 subscribers, which truly amazes me. I, I am so thankful and so appreciative of everything that, uh, all the support that, that everybody's given me in this space. Didn't expect it. Expected to have a thousand subscribers by the end of the year, and here we are, oh, nine months in, and I've got more than 10 times that. So, so thank you very much. Also, a special shout out to the Patreon and uh, YouTube membership people out there as well. I uh, just can't believe that somebody would actually, um, what I call it, say, leave a tip in the tip jar 
and help me along in this journey. Really love it. Just, uh, just thank you so much. Thank you so much. Our regular schedule, we continue to publish every Tuesday morning, what I would call Tuesday morning again, based on where I live, which is, you know, Tuesday mornings around 8 a.m. And that's GMT minus five during the summer months, minus six during the the winter months, you know, so I guess in the UK, that would be about 1 p.m. or so, um, you know, local time there. And of course, all points east of that, um, you know, in India, that could be somewhere around, you know, six or seven at night. But, um, you know, that's kind of the, the schedule that we'd like to continue to adhere to. I think it works out really well for all of us. Now, let's talk a little bit about how we do it. Um, I say, keep saying we, but it's really me. <laughs> I'm a one person operator. I don't have a, an editor. I don't have a production team. I don't have anything along that line. I'm a guy in his office at home who enjoys playing a game and, and has really taught himself how to do some video editing. So um, thanks for all the positive feedback and all the comments that you guys have given me around that too. Just uh, learning my way into that regard. But uh, you know, typically what I'll do is is uh, the first part of the, the, the episode that I'll record is kind of that central build sequence where I'm literally sitting down after I've kind of sketched some ideas out uh, and I'll start building. I'll just start building away and talking you guys through it and, and sharing with you my observations and my thoughts as to the, the what I'm doing and why I'm doing it. And when I get to the end, I'm oftentimes just as um, surprised as anybody else. <laughs> this is what I've done. Okay, this is, looks, looks great. We'll keep it and we'll go. And then uh, after that, I'll come back in. I'll shoot the intro. I'll shoot the outro and, and like the teaser and the cinematics just to kind of wrap it all up and put it together. I hope it's a format that you guys like and appreciate. If you have some other thoughts, let me know. Um, but it seems to be working well for us. And we'll probably continue that format, certainly through the Pengasus Bay series. Now, um, I want to talk a little bit about the impact of the Economy 2.0 patch on this um, on this city. I don't know what to expect. We really don't. You know, we talked about the tile upkeep at the beginning. I also, just due to the very nature that we have very few, a select number of service buildings that are available to us in the vanilla game, I don't know what that's going to look like in terms of the cost or expense to the city. Uh, I use those service buildings and reuse those silver service buildings over and over all throughout the city. And I would imagine that's going to that's going to rack up an incredible cost. And I use them primarily for decorative elements. And as you guys have been along with me on this journey, I love them for storytelling and really kind of setting the scene, if you will, for a given part of town and, and you know why it's got a specific flavor. Uh, that could be a tremendous expense for us. And, and you know as we go to the second half of this video, I'll probably have to go through and start thinking about what services I'm going to need to eliminate or remove or, or modify based on the budget for the city. I want to give a shout out to a couple of the content creators that have really been super helpful in in respect to the community during this patch, specifically uh, City Planner Plays, Overcharged Egg, and Biffa. Um, just the amount of information that they have shared with us, um, first of all, because they had earlier, earlier access to this patch and this build, um, has just been super, super uh, you know, critical to the sec success of this um, iteration, if you will, of the game. And I'm looking forward to taking some of the learnings that they've shared and applying those into uh, hopefully trying to save Pangasus Bay. <laughs> I hope we can do that. And, um, you know, I, we'll see how things go. I, I, I shared with you, I got about an $18 million budget for city tiles. Mm, city Planner Plays had a great, um, a great observation by using the 529 tiles mod to come in and unlock or I should say relock all the tiles and then come in, back in and selectively unlocking the tiles. We may have to do that. Of course, we could always just flip the switch and turn off the tile expense there if, if push comes to shove and, and we have no other workaround. But I'd prefer to try and work within the confines of the game if possible, if possible. And the other thing, as I mentioned, that's the service upkeep for all those extra buildings. And I get it that the worker count increases in those spaces, but the, the cost of those go up quite a bit. And I may have to go through spot by spot and just eliminate some of those service items from the city. Again, don't know what the impact will be, but maybe we'll find out. I'm not sure what to expect. The nice thing is that we had about a $2 billion cushion sitting in the bank that we can lean on. So we've got some time. We've got a little bit of time to see how things play out. And hopefully we can get the uh, economy and the city dialed back in. But will it be enough? I don't know. Will the city survive? I don't know. <laughs> the game's running on 3X, and, and I'm going to let it do that for a couple of months uh, till we get through that initial death wave. In fact, let's just do a quick little cinematic, and there you can see all the ambulance calls that are out there. The city is in free fall, but our, our money seems to be holding... Well, yeah, we're losing about $500,000 an hour at the moment, but, um, you know, we'll see. We'll see what happens, and uh, I'm going to let the game fast forward um, through time. And then what I'm going to do is let's let's come back after everything is kind of shaken out 
and then we'll start doing some some triage work. All right. Well, guys and gals, I threw a lot at you there, and I apologize for being long-winded and verbose. I just thought it was a great time for us to just chat a little bit about Pangasus Bay. And if at the end of the day, if I shouldn't say the end of the day, if we get a few episodes down and we're not able to solve it uh, and, and make sure that the city works functionally going forward, then we'll move on to our next project. Rest assured, we've got a lot of other projects planned beyond Pangasus Bay. So, all right. With all that as a backdrop, let's do this all right welcome back and we have now moved fast forwarded through time all the way up to december of 2042 as you recall we were uh, we started off around october of 2042 around noon and as you can see it's about 5 17 p.m so we've let a two full months roll by plus an additional let's call it six hours and you can see as i pan around the city the death wave is, <laughs> it seems to have subsided as we take a look around, there are no ambulance calls out there. In fact, I don't see any at the moment, which is great. And then we also have, um, you know, we don't have any of the massive traffic congestion that I noticed during the time lapse, uh, especially you know some of the areas that were a little off the beaten path, like this uh, this little diverging diamond interchange up here. This one was completely packed with traffic there for for a significant part of the time lapse. So the traffic patterns clearly have changed during the uh, you know during the uh, upgrade as well. So. Let's take a look and, and zoom out just a little bit and take a look at Pang Pangasus Bay. Uh, it's a very spread out city. And, and when you think about the um, just kind of the geography of this build, I've endeavored to do something that's not, say, in the New York or Hong Kong mold, where I have a highly concentrated packed in downtown, but rather more uh, maybe something along the way of Tampa or Tampa in Florida or, or, or maybe San Diego in California, just a little bit more spread out. Let's jump in and take a look at our finances. And that's gonna be the key to survival here in Pangasus Bay. And we'll just, we'll just see how things go. Right off the bat, that tile upkeep, we talked about this prior to, to you know, d d ducking away, was that it's at $18.8 .8 million a month. That's a massive burden on a city given the fact that our tax rates are only generating $15 million right now. So that's gonna be something we're gonna to wanna to keep our eye on. In fact, I might just try um, uh, City Planner Plays, Phil's tactic of installing the 529 tiles mod, resetting all of our tiles, then coming back in, uninstalling it, rebuying out the tiles that we need, and then proceeding along like along that path. But honestly, part of the problem is going to be even if we completely abated that uh, that eighteen million dollars a month tile upkeep, we're still in the hole. I mean, we've got a massive, massive hole to climb out. We're sitting at about twenty three million dollars a month negative, uh, and and that's that's going to be really tough for us to achieve here. So. Let's let's and before we jump in and do that, let's do the first thing that is probably going to be the easiest. You can see right now our taxes we're bringing in just under sixteen million dollars a month in taxes. And if I jump to our taxation tab, you can see my tax rates are all over the board. So let's just go ahead and baseline that. Remember the number we're starting with is fifteen point eight million. Let's do some updates here. I wanted to you know kind of give people on the lower end of the education spectrum a, a you know a little bit of a benefit uh, as I was looking through the city. And I'm just going to go ahead and baseline everything now at 12%. We'll do that across the board for all of our residential. And in fact, I'll probably do that across the board for most of the areas of the city. But you can see in the immediate impact, not a permanent impact, was for it to jump up to the tune of about $900,000 a month. Now, we can jump into commercial. It's set at 15% across the board. I don't even know why I had that number. It's been so long since I've touched it. I'm going to take it down to also 12%, which is going to reduce our income our tax revenues by quite a bit along the way and maybe it'll spur on some additional commercial development i don't know and then we can come into industrial and you can see it's all over the board i was trying to incentivize a variety of different businesses to move into our city um, but let's just go ahead and and baseline all of those at 12 percent as well there and now we've got all of our commercial set up at a 12% uh, rate, or industrial, I'm sorry. We've got all of our industrial set up at a 12% rate. And so there was some shifting, there was some balancing going on between those two areas as well. The net result is that we're still only about a positive eh, four or $500,000. And then let's do the same thing with office. Let's just take office. Well, that seems to be consistent across the board. Let's just take it up to 12%. And that'll have a little minor impact as well. Hopefully it'll bring that, that tax revenue up as well. So all in all, we've only moved the needle to the tune of a million dollars. So if I jump back to our total budget here, we're still sitting, we're still sitting well underwater. 
Um, and that's not an encouraging sign. Uh, yeah, our tax revenue really hasn't changed a whole lot. Now, service fees, this is where we're going to have an opportunity to go through and make some adjustments on service fees. And then, of course, service trade. Service trade is, it can be really tracked by our production where we're seeing uh, imports and exports. In fact, let's do this. Let's go. I'm going to close that out and I'm going to jump over here. If I go into like water, you can see our water availability, 1.3 million metric cubic metric I guess cubic meters, cubic meters a month, and uh, we're only consuming one or eight eight hundred thousand. So you can see we're exporting quite a bit of water. Uh, if I do the same thing with electricity, we're exporting quite a bit of electricity, and that's a nice little power. Uh, that's a nice little profitability set, sector for us. But um, you know, is it really truly worth it? You know, for example, do we need to have two massive uh, gas power plants in our city? Yeah, maybe not. And so. Um, those are those are going to be some areas for us to explore from a services standpoint, and then service upkeeps. This is going to be the big one. This is where we're going to have to look, take some really hard looks in and around the city. So, for example, let's take a look at the sports complex here. If I could go out here to this central intelligence bureau that's sitting out here that we kind of use as a tennis purposing, a tennis and basketball center, that's four hundred thousand dollars a month for zero arrested criminals. Uh, I'm going to go out on a limb and say we can probably deactivate that. So we deactivate that one, and that'll help 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 us uh, with some of our finances. And I think you can make some hard choices like that throughout the city, like this fire station, $1.39 million a month that we're spending, and there are no vehicles in use. Let's shelve that as well. And so what I'm going to have to do now is I'll have to go zone by zone, area by area, all throughout the city, and identify resources that we simply don't need you know in some cases i can delete them some take cases i'll just turn them off but you can see it's going to be a significant task as i look all the way across this massive city where we've got resources scattered all throughout it's going to take me a while so i'm not going to force you guys to sit there and watch through that let me tackle that and then we'll see what the end result is all right be right back Right, welcome back and i give you um the power down version of pengasus bay <laughs> look at this as you as i hover over here you can see all these deactivated signs all throughout the city take a look all throughout the city you're going to see those little deactivated signs and that's the power button it tells you that that's that building is no longer uh providing any services and it's only got minimal upkeep and you know i took some time and went district by district all throughout the city identifying any opportunities that I had for us to power down some of those buildings and to create a situation where we could really get some savings uh, on the services side. And as you can see, those little power buttons are all around the city, deactivated, deactivated, deactivated. Uh, there's a lot of them here and there. And uh, you know, I even went so far as to power down a second gas power plant. And in doing so, just I want to show you some of the services here, like electricity. We're still producing 367 megawatts of electricity, uh, and, and so we were able to export some of that. Water, we're still producing, you know, a million cubic meters a month. We're exporting 340,000. So, you know, we could even shut down services even further in that regard. And then, you know, as I go through here, medical, you know, crematorium, I think this is an average monthly number. We're not having big death waves anymore, so I think that's going to that's gonna settle in. But healthcare, we clearly have way more healthcare than required. Uh, 1,800 capacity, 98 sick or injured in the city. Cemeteries, plenty of availability and so forth. And that's even with the ones I powered down. Uh, fire service, I think fire service, we're still in the green here. We're still doing pretty well, um, even with everything shut down. And then police, Nah, similar. We've got, um, you know, don't have any prison cap capacity because we never did build a pr prison, but we've got lots of availability in the jails and the crime rate is very, very low. So even with, um, you know, even with a lot of all of those services shut down, uh, we're, we've got ample coverage across the city. Now, the challenge is this. Let's go back into the finances here. As, I, as you can see, we're still hemorrhaging quite a bit of money. 
Uh, and and the, the monthly balance now is trimmed down to about $17 million. $17 million negative in the hole. So, so in the hole, uh, we're, we're still running deficits. Now, a big chunk of that, well, you know, you could attribute that to tile upkeep. The new tile upkeep um, methodology or logic that's in the game is a pretty big number. But in reality, even if we were to go in and flip that, you know, flip that feature off, turn that off, that's still going to keep us around break even for our monthly balance. And that's without even factoring the fact that we've got so many buildings that have deactivated. And I want to show you like one of those buildings here, this Central Intelligence Bureau. We're paying $13,000 a month in upkeep. Uh, if I fire it back up, it's about a $400,000 a month upkeep. This police headquarters way over here, we're paying uh, $18,000 a month in upkeep as a dormant building. And it was uh, it was about a million dollars uh, before. So uh, a lot of those service buildings, this fire station down here in the bottom corner, uh, I think we're paying 20 grand a month. We were paying about 400,000 a month before. So, you know, even coming through and, and re significantly reducing the service exp expenditures all throughout the city, we're still in a deficit situation. So I'm really kind of wanting to get feedback from from the audience, get feedback from the community on, on which we should do from here, where we should go from here. Yes, we can turn off the tile upkeep and play the game that way. Um, that's that's an option for us. And again, that'll that'll get our monthly balance um, closer to break even. And then we can selectively come back in here and reactivate some of these services, obviously knowing that we can't reactivate all of them. Two, uh, we can pay closer to, to attention to our demand bars and see that we have no need for office right now. And so we've got office scattered throughout the city. Do we remove some of that? Or do we just take a look at the more important part of the demand bar, which is, hey, we need a lot more residential. And uh, although we're sitting on a population of 88,000, should we boost that? Should we start building out spaces and dropping an additional residential? Like, you know, this space out here that I had, I had marked off for additional residential and this space here. And, and should we put in some lower income housing and, and, and commercial down here alongside the airport. And, uh, you know, there are varieties of, of places, pockets of places where I had concepted out more additional commercial for the, uh, for this, uh, not commercial, but residential for the city, um, you know, to, and tackle that up to try and hit that demand. Now, the other alternative is, is to just say, hey, you know what, Sculptor, we gave it a good run. And this is Pangasus Bay. It was the first ever City Skylines 2 episode or series that you put together. And it, you know, we can say we, we, we can appreciate it for what it is. I'm totally fine with that. Um, I, you know, I have all along said I was going to do about a dozen cities in Grand Vanillica. And this one has been a good run. I mean, this is episode, what, uh, 34. I had all along intended to do about 40 episodes. And and if, if the community gives me enough feedback that says, you know what, attaboy, good job time to move on well i'm fine with that too uh you know because i've got ideas for for you know a dozen cities on the continent I'd, I'd be happy to do that so let's do this let's do this i'll put a poll out today in a, or you know sometime here in the next couple of days on the channel and then we'll let that poll sit for about a week or so and i want to get some some information feedback and and thoughts from the community. Uh, I'd like to see which direction you'd like to see us to go. If we decide to stay with Pangasus Bay, it'll take a fairly Herculean re-engineering event to make that happen. <laughs> and that's fine. I'm up to that task. Uh, or if we decide to move on to our next city, which uh, which I have some already uh, some ideas, some concepts in mind uh, for our next city. Well, I'm open to that understanding too. I'm open to doing that as well. I would probably select another one of our vanilla maps and uh, jump in and uh, you know I've already got a list of some of the types of cities I want to be building in the future and and maybe it'll have a little different look and feel than Pangasus Bay so I want you to know that I'm open let's do this together as a team all right so um, anyhow look for that poll to come out here in the next uh, couple of days and uh, you know if we decide to move on from Pangasus Bay well I think we can kind of give it a farewell tour as well we'll do a, like a cinematic reel and and pull everything together as well if we decide to stay here we'll roll up our sleeves and get to work all right well I've talked your ear off enough today this is probably the most I've ever talked in an episode and uh, I do appreciate your support so uh, I'll let, we'll let things go for today and uh, until next time good morning good day good afternoon good evening and good night <laughs>